What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So, in this video, I want to talk about how I believe that we owe Pau Gasol an apology. We owe him an apology because at the time, we thought that he was the epitome of being soft. I remember uh, a lot of times we used to call him Pal the Soft, other more clever nicknames, and play on his name to, insin you know, to, to ins insinuate how soft he was. And it all pretty much started in the 2008 NBA Finals when he was thoroughly outplayed and outhustled by Kevin Garnett, an all-time great player, but that was the X factor matchup. Now, at the same time, Andrew Bynum didn't play in that series, but still, that was the key matchup. And you looked at his past. You know, he was a really good player, but he was never considered one of the greatest power forwards. At that time, the greatest power forwards, I would say in 2007, this was after Weber suffered an injury, so he was kind of Chris Weber. This was after Chris Weber suffered an injury, so he had fallen off of the landscape like that. But I think the two best power forwards at that time were probably Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett. And Garnett was starting to enter the downside of his career, but still he won a championship. And Lakers Nation went in on Pau Gasol. Talking about how he need to step up. This ain't Memphis, you know. Um, but, you know, playing with Kobe Bryant. And playing with Kobe Bryant. Toughened him up. Now, he never was going to be Shaq. He never was going to be an Audis Gilmore type player. A Moses Malone. A physical player. But he did become physically stronger. He became tougher out there. Um, and he became a little bit, a little bit by his standards, a little bit meaner. And Pau Gasol was critical, critical in those two championship runs the Lakers made in 2009 and 2010. There's no doubt about that. But this is why you really got to look at Pau Gasol differently compared to Anthony Davis. At no point in, in Pau Gasol's career was he considered the best big man in the league. None. When he was playing in Memphis, I would say he was, hmm, I got to look at those list of power forwards again, because I would say, I would even argue that more people looked at Amari Stoudemire at that time, the Pau Gasol. But Pau might have been top five, but it might have been the bottom part of that top five. Whereas Anthony Davis, up until this year, maybe up until either late last year or this season, most people still tell you Anthony Davis is the top big man in the league. So the expectations were different. Pau was a B plus player. Anthony Davis at A-plus. Now, because of playing with a Kobe Bryant, because of his accomplishments, because of his longevity, Powell, and also because of his overseas accomplishments, you know, as far as the Olympics, and I think in, in, in that league over there, he's won some, some titles. So because of his resume, Powell is going to go into the Hall of Fame. But a lot of that came from playing with a guy like Kobe Bryant. Now, you look at Anthony Davis playing with LeBron James, and you wonder, because supposedly LeBron makes players better. But you can argue that he's regressed. And you can't put age on it. You can't put age on it, because he's 28. Unless he's going to be one of these guys who's just going to fall apart quicker, quicker than average, but he's 28, 
He's having an okay season, but he's not having a season that you would expect for a guy that's entering his best years. But Powell, even to his mid-30s, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Powell will consistently give you 17, 18 points a game and 11 or 12 rebounds. He wasn't a guy like AD that can give you 27 and 12. That wasn't, he wasn't that dominant a player. But Pau Gasol had a nice game. He was a nice face-up. You know, he could score in the paint, but he had a nice little jumper out to about 16 feet or so. Uh, as he got older, he kind of put his range out occasionally to a three-point line, but not no deep. He wasn't a guy like uh, Brooke Lopez who can shoot deep threes, but um, but Powell had the nice all-around game, you know what I'm saying? And shit, I think the Lakers be better off with a prime Powell Gasol right now than Anthony Davis. One thing you can you'll be one thing you can depend on with Powell Gasol, you might criticize him for not banging hard enough for playing, uh, you know, tough. But shit, you didn't have to worry about him not playing. So, yeah, I mean, when you look at how Pau Gasol was the epitome of a soft player, and you look at what's going on with Anthony Davis, my goodness. But we've heard these criticisms before from other players. Before Magic Johnson got to L.A., even though Kareem had already won a title with the Bucks in 71, there were some people that criticized Kareem in the late 70s, by the late 70s. When the Lakers couldn't make it to the finals, they would say Kareem was a finesse guy. He didn't like the bang. Uh, they wouldn't say he was soft, but, you know, sometimes they were eluded. Say he didn't like playing with phys- playing against physical centers, just holding them back, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So hindsight is twenty twenty, but, man. I mean, when you look at Lakers' big men, how can you not put Pau Gasol ahead of AD? I mean, they won two championships. They appeared in three consecutive NBA finals. Maybe if AD was, excuse me, if Andrew Bynum was available in 2008, maybe they do beat Boston. Who knows? But you got to say, man, huh. Ten years ago, when we was going in on Pau Gasol for being soft, even though they kind of stopped when they won titles, but 2008, 2009, even then, even when in the title runs, Powell would sometimes have these games where, you know, he he would not bring bring his all. You know what I'm saying? He he would have these games where he would score 12 points and seven rebounds. You're like, come on, Powell, we we know you could do better than that, and you know Kobe would get on his ass. We'll come out the next night and have like 30 points and 13 rebounds. Or well, the next time they play it anyway. But AD, man, he's too unpredictable. You know, he, he'll have a game with 30 points and 10 rebounds against a, a C, you know, a, a, a C grade team and think he's doing something. And then when the Lakers need him, he either don't show up or he underperforms. So, yeah, to me, Anthony Davis is not just the softest player in the history of Lakers. I think he's the softest player in the history of the NBA. Damn near, at least. At least as far as a guy who could be a superstar. So in that vein, I think we owe Pau Gasol an apology. But tell me what you guys think.